Hello. We get to do bump dates. Weekly bump updates. That's kind of a tongue twister. I have always wanted to do these. I have watched other people's bump dates for many years. So the fact that I am now making my weekly bump updates is amazing. So, welcome. I have kind of a setup of questions that I'm going to be using every single week to be able to compare week to week how things have changed. So you'll see the setup for this week. This is mostly my five week bump date, but because I didn't do one at four weeks, I'm going to throw in a few things from four weeks as well. So let's get started. I have my computer off to my side here with all of my questions on it. So if you see me looking over here, that's what I'm looking at. Our first question is going to be, how far along are you and when is your due date? So today I am five weeks and six days. I changed to a new week of being pregnant on Saturday, which is why these bump dates are going to be coming out on Friday because it'll recap the week from before and symptoms and what may have happened during that week. So today I am five weeks and six days pregnant, which is very cool. I'm excited. Um, my due date is March 5th, 2022, which is what I had calculated. I had a trigger shot and an intrauterine insemination to get pregnant. So I kind of already had a very good guess of when it happened. But my doctor confirmed that my due date is March 5th. So that's exciting that I was accurate in my guessing. Next question is how big is baby? Baby is the size of a Smartie or the size of a black peppercorn, which to me seem like very different sizes. So I'm not exactly sure which one to go by. A Smartie seems bigger to me than a black peppercorn, but those are what two different apps say. So maybe somewhere in between there, I don't know. But it is estimated to be 0.3 inches and only 0.01 ounces. So very, very tiny, it's just a tiny little thing. Next part doesn't really come into play yet, but it's about weight gain. So far, I have not gained any weight, although I do feel bloated and I feel like I look like I've gained weight in my stomach. According to the scale, I have not gained any weight. I actually lost 12 pounds before I got pregnant. So I've been on a low glycemic diet and been taking medication for my PCOS and I actually lost 12 pounds right before I got pregnant. So I still have lost those 12 pounds that I had previously. I'm sure they will come back at some point, but for good reasons. Must have items is what I'm gonna put for the next category that I'll go through every week. And it's just gonna be things that I've found helpful for me at this stage because I know I went back and watched other people's bump dates when I wasn't even pregnant yet. So then I got some ideas from them. So this is for anybody in the future, or even myself in the future of getting pregnant and what might be helpful. So. At, I'll get into this in a minute, but at four weeks I had a lot of symptoms and at five weeks I haven't had too many symptoms. So most of this is from four weeks and not this week. But I have had a little bit of nausea. I used um, pink stork morning sickness sweets. I have the raspberry ginger flavor and I'll put a link for all of these down in the description below. I am not affiliated with any of them. I do not get any kind of commission for talking about them or telling you about them. This is just personally what has helped me and I wanna help other people if you're having the same issue. That's been really helpful for um, sickness, like feeling nauseous. It has B6 in it though. So if you have B6 in other ways that you're taking, because I also take B6, I had to lower that um, supplement a little bit because it also has it in these and you can only take four of them per day, four of the ginger, raspberry ginger candies because it has the B6 in it so you don't want to get too much of it. But usually I'll do one after I eat dinner and that helps kind of calm my stomach after I've had some medication with my dinner and eaten. I also use something called tummy drops which is a ginger candy that I find helpful just if I'm driving around or if I randomly get a bout of nausea. I found that helpful. I also have a Contigo water bottle which has 40 ounces of water in it and I found that pretty helpful because I have been much more thirsty and had kind of a dry mouth cotton mouth feeling we'll get to all that in a minute but that's been what's helpful for me this week like I said I'll link them down in the description but it is I get nothing from you clicking on them so if you don't want to <laughs> you don't have to Next category is symptoms, which kind of varies. I broke it down this time into three kind of separate categories. First, before I got my positive pregnancy test, I wanna talk about that first. I can do a whole nother video about the symptoms leading up to my positive pregnancy test if you want. Let me know if that's something you're interested in seeing. But basically I felt pretty normal. No, sometimes I'll get like breast tenderness or some cramping or some moodiness or acne before my period comes. And I figured I would get the same before my positive pregnancy test, but I didn't, I felt pretty normal. 
The only things that I noticed was oiliness, like my hands, my hair, and my face were very oily. I kept having to wipe my phone screen off because my hands just had so much oil on them and it just made everything so oily. My laptop, my computer, anything I was touching, it was so weird. So that was one of the only things I noticed. Um, I also had some light cramping and like just body achiness in general and less of an appetite. I wasn't feeling really nauseous and I wasn't really feeling sick. I just didn't really feel that hungry. So that was all before I got my positive pregnancy test. We got poodles now. So there's an Ellie in my lap and I don't know if you can see the top of Noelle's head, but she's laying next to me being a good poodle. So little poodle heads might pop in. After I got my pregnancy test, my positive pregnancy test, f about week four, four weeks pregnant, I felt a lot of symptoms. I felt a lack of appetite that continued to happen. I felt very bloated. I have some pictures where I just felt like very bloated. Um, my gums felt kind of sore when I was brushing my teeth. It didn't hurt, it wasn't bleeding. It just felt kind of sore, like I'd irritated them somehow. Um, and then I had a very dry mouth, like that cotton mouth kind of feeling and some occasional nausea. That was all during week four. Now, I'm in week five and I have much less symptoms. For the most part, I feel very normal. I'm not having any kind of those symptoms. Um, I still feel kind of bloated and I still will get occasionally nauseous, usually at nighttime. Um, but overall, much less symptoms, which concerns me. And I actually ended up going to the doctor for it. I will get to that in a few moments, but I actually ended up going to the doctor because I was concerned that I wasn't having as many symptoms. But week five definitely is different. And I have had nightmares the past two nights related to pregnancy and baby and everything. So I don't know if that's a pregnancy symptom or not, but I have heard that you can have more vivid dreams. So symptoms have changed a lot week to week. Next category is cravings and aversions. Haven't really had any cravings yet besides maybe water because I've been really thirsty and always wanting to drink water. I don't know if that counts as a craving. I've had not specific aversions, not like this one food sounds horrible. During week four, I felt nauseous and didn't want anything. I lived off of crackers. I would have crackers and cottage cheese, crackers and yogurt, crackers and anything basically, just so that I could eat something. Lasagna was working well too. I wasn't craving lasagna. I was just able to eat it without feeling super nauseous afterwards. Now, this week I haven't really had any cravings. I've had uh, fast food once or twice, which usually I don't eat fast food at all. Wouldn't say I was craving it necessarily, but I just happened to be by it and got it. So nothing yet, but this I'm sure will come later. Next category is what I miss. I can't say that I miss too much yet because I'm not too far into my pregnancy yet. I do miss having all of the symptoms that I had last week though. Well, let me rephrase that. I don't necessarily miss having the symptoms, but I miss having the reassurance from having the symptoms. So I didn't enjoy feeling nauseous. I didn't enjoy those feelings, but I do miss having the reassurance that there are symptoms. So maybe I'm just one of those lucky people that don't get a ton of symptoms. It just freaks me out that it means something bad. But now we get to the next part. Next part is challenges from this week. I kind of hinted at it already, but I haven't really had a lot of symptoms, which has been challenging because I had some last week and then they slowly went away. And I thought, man, that can't be a good sign. So I called my doctor yesterday, my fertility specialist that we've been seeing and said the whole explanation that I had symptoms last week, haven't really had them this much this week. All I've really had is cramping and that's about it. And so they said that I should come in and get checked out, especially because of the cramping. And they wanted to make sure everything was okay, which I appreciate that they actually want to make sure it's okay. Um, so I went in and they did an ultrasound and overall everything looks good. Um, the baby is in the uterus, so it's not in my um, tubes. It's not in my fallopian tubes. It's not an ectopic pregnancy. It's in my uterus, which is where it should be, which is great. Uh, he was able to like measure it, I think it's the sack, not the baby, but he measured the sack and it was 10 millimeters, I think is what he said, which is what it should be for six weeks, which is great. I'm almost six weeks, so that's measuring exactly where it should be. Uh, he saw the yolk sac in the pictures that we took, the ultrasound pictures. You can't see the yolk sac, but he could see it on the ultrasound, so that's great. We couldn't see the actual baby yet and we couldn't see the heartbeat yet, but he didn't seem concerned about that. He said that that's just... It, it, the heart starts beating at any time now. So it could have happened today. It could happen tomorrow. We don't know. We go back in a week to do another ultrasound and hopefully we will see it then. But it's been nerve wracking. So that was definitely nice to be able to see 
a baby. I'll put some pictures up. We got our first picture as a family because my husband came too because I called him at work and told him I don't know what's going on but I'm going to the doctor and he said he wanted to come too. So I was very thankful to have him there as well. Another thing that's been hard is not tracking. I was tracking my cycles so much. I was doing LH tests uh, for ovulation every single day usually multiple times a day. I was doing pregnancy tests multiple times a day. I was taking my temperature every single morning. I religiously was doing all of these things and now I'm doing none of it. I'm still taking medication for various things, but I'm not tracking anything. And that feels really weird. It feels like I'm missing a part that I've done for a very long time. So that's been a big adjustment. I feel like I don't have data to compare and I don't like that feeling because I feel like I don't know what's going on and I don't have any kind of insight into it. So the lack of symptoms and not tracking anything has been a very hard thing to get used to. Has anybody else had that? Has anybody else been tracking for a long time, tracking their cycles and now it feels strange not to? <laughs> I don't know how to get over it, but I'm just, hopefully I will eventually. Next category is my highlight of the week, which even though it was the challenge of the week, also the highlight was going to the doctor. I got to see the baby, even though we can't really see the actual baby yet, we can see, he called it the baby's property and the baby's swimming pool of <laughs> where the baby is living, which I thought was cute. And my husband got to be there. It was very reassuring knowing that all of those things are going well, it's the right size, it's the right place, things are matching up the way they should. My estimated due date was accurate that so far everything looks the way it should and that was very relieving. I didn't say this part during the challenge but the doctor found um, cysts. I had one cyst on my right ovary 21 millimeters before I got pregnant this cycle um, and then I thought the cyst probably was still there I don't know um, but it, it definitely is and now there's two more cysts so I have three cysts on my right ovary and my ovary in general is inflamed and enlarged and that I think is what is causing the pain and cramping. Um, he said, I basically don't need to do anything for it. I just, we're gonna keep an eye on it. And I just need to kind of take it easy so that I don't inflame it anymore. I forgot that about the challenges, but getting all that information was very helpful. My last category is going to be things I'm looking forward to. And I'm definitely looking forward to our scan. We have it next Thursday, so a week after our scan we had this week. And I'm really hoping that we get to see the heartbeat because I feel like that would be very good reassurance that baby is there, baby is growing, it's going the way that it should. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to just like enjoying my pregnancy more. I feel like so far it's been very anxiety inducing and very stressful and I've been very overwhelmed. And after having the appointment yesterday, I just want to focus more on the pregnancy and that it's going well and that I it's it's doing what it's supposed to do <laughs> so I did a meditation last night it was called like a first trimester pregnancy meditation or something I just cried through the whole thing because I felt like I hadn't really been connecting with the baby or like focusing on the baby I've just been focusing on all the things that could be going wrong and what might be happening and might not be happening so I really want to try to focus more on that and on being happy and thankful and not so stressed out. So that might mean less social media because I feel like when I go on to social media, it's really easy to compare yourself to other people and be worried that you're not having the same symptoms they are, you're not as uh, showing as much as they are, you're not having the same levels or numbers that they are. And I feel like that's very uh, dangerous for me because then I just focus on that and I worry about things. So definitely taking some more meditation breaks and some more self-care breaks and trying to focus on finally achieving the goal of getting pregnant. And hopefully we just continue to see very positive and good news. All right, my last little thing that I'm going to show you is a belly shot. Right now, there's really not that much to see. I just am kind of bloated and kind of normal. So I'll still give you a little peek but there's not really anything to see right now. There probably won't be for a long time because like I said, baby is very, very, very tiny. So not really anything going on, but let me show you. Okay, here it is with my shirt down. Just a little bit of loading. If I suck in, here's how it looks. If I just relax like normal, here's how it looks. Here it is from the front. And here it is from the left side. Just kind of bloated right now. Roll it up. I can show you like that. And then here it is from the side. Like I said, just kind of bloated from the front and from the other side. 
not too much yet. Thanks for watching my first bump date and hopefully next week I have an even more exciting ultrasound of a little heartbeat to show you. See you next week.